Hello friends, I am Larry Hutton. This is the Limitless Life television program. I'm your host and I'm glad to have you with me today. We always share so many good things on this program because all we're sharing is things God has to say. You can hear from God, my friend. You can, you may not think you can. You may have a hard time uh, when you try and talk to God or pray, but it is not hard to hear from God. The first and foremost thing you gotta do is he wrote you a letter. If you want to hear from God, you got to learn to read his letter. <laughs> read, his, read the Bible, read the Word of God, specifically New Testament, because the New Testament is written for those of us uh, living today after Jesus died on the cross, rose again, went into the Holy of Holies and purchased a, uh, a redemption for mankind. Uh, then the New Testament came into existence, uh, uh, the early church, and then us, the, the latter church, before Jesus splits the clouds and comes and takes us all away. And uh, uh, we, we share things that are going to help you live the good life. God wants you to live the good life. He wants you to live a life that you enjoy uh, and that where you're not uh, mentally... Uh, up and down all the time or, or sick all the time or poor and lack finances all the time. He wants you healthy. He wants you wealthy. He wants you wise. He wants you full of his love, full of his goodness, full of his peace and joy. And that's what you're going to hear on this t television program because it's limitless. God is limitless. He takes all the limitless off the blessings, off of our physical health, off of everything about our lives. Uh, we get to live uh, a life without limits whenever uh, we start walking with Jesus. So we're going to get back into the, the particular uh, subject matter that we're teaching. We always try and teach uh, subjects that are relevant for your life today, things that you have to deal with in everyday life. What do you have to deal with in everyday life? Well, you have to deal with money. So we're going to do a whole series on that because God's the one that created it, by the way. And he created it for you and me to enjoy, not to love. He, he created wealth. And, and finances and money and uh, this uh, uh, stuff we use on an everyday basis, he created it to, for us to enjoy. So we're not supposed to love it, idolize it, we're supposed to have it, and we're never supposed to serve money, we're supposed to let money serve us. So God cares about your money, he cares about your physical health. I mean, everyday life, that's relevant, isn't it? Uh, he cares about your emotions, the way you feel, and the way other people make you feel and so forth and so on. So we deal with those subjects on this program because God wants to take all the things that have been limiting you. He wants to just remove them so that you can live a limitless life. So we've been discussing uh, the last 27 programs. This is actually now the 28th program. Uh, but we've been discussing uh, God wants you healthy. That's what we entitled the series. God wants you healthy healthy. And for those of us, you may be like me and, and living in health right now and don't have sickness or disease attacking your body right now. We need to hear these things because at some point we will be attacked in our physical bodies. The thief is out there, Satan, the evil one, the devil, the destroyer, the wicked one, the liar. He's out there. Jesus said so. He said the thief comes while we're on this earth, a thief through demons and devils and evil spirits and so forth, he's going to come. He's going to try and steal and kill and destroy. He's going to try and do that in different areas of our lives. But Jesus said, but I've come so that that'll offset what this devil's doing. So you can resist what the devil's doing. You can receive what I'm doing, Jesus said. And then you can have a life and have it full and overflowing and blessed in every area. But the devil's going to come. So you and I need to be ready with the word of God. Don't let him come like the one passage of scripture. Don't let him come and find the house empty because then he'll go get other demons and try and come back and make you worse than you were to begin with. No, bless God. Go ahead and get full of the word of God. Stay full of the word of God. And then you're ready to do battle then because the devil's already defeated. And the battle, believe it or not, a lot of people may not know this. The battle is in the in the mind. It's in the mental, the realm of reason. Listen, if the devil can keep you in the realm of reason, he'll defeat you every time. But if you keep him in the realm of faith, you'll defeat him every time. And true Bible faith is always based on the finished work of Jesus. So if you keep the devil in the realm of faith, God's grace is going to flow to you and you're going to win, win, win. 
in every situation, in your, in your physical health, in your finances, in your emotions and feelings and, and everything. So let's get back to our series, God Wants You Healthy. We've been reading from Romans 10, 13, 14, and then verse 17. It says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved, but they can't call on him if they don't believe. They can't believe if they don't hear and they can't hear if somebody doesn't preach it. Verse 17, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we've been studying in that particular passage because it opened up the will of God to us. Whoever calls on the name, the name is Savior. So if you call, you get saved. The name is healer. So if you call, you get healed. The name is peace. So if you call, you get emotionally set free. Whatever name you're calling on them, remember the word saved. If you haven't been with us, the word saved is the Greek word sozo. It means saved, delivered, preserved, protected, healed, made whole. All of those different definitions are part of salvation. It's part of our package when we accept Jesus. So then we can release our faith to receive a different work of God's grace. That's why you can come boldly to the throne of grace even after you get saved. Because there's more grace. And there's grace for healing, and that's why we're discussing this particular topic, God wants you healthy. First of all, it's relevant in your life today. You need health in your life. People don't want to feel bad. You don't want to feel bad. And so God wants you healthy, and so we've, we have to attack the, the spiritual side, the life of God's side, even before you go to the natural side. I mean, there's a lot of natural things. You know, if people are eating sugar all the time and eating fried food and junk food and fats, and just all kinds of the worst fats for all the time, they're not going to be healthy. I mean, there's things. If you don't get sleep, you're not going to be healthy. Um, if, uh, if you're worried and stressed all the time, you're not going to be healthy. So there's a lot of things on, on that natural side that we have to do as well. But if we don't understand what God's already done for us and the healing power of God, I, I noticed that all of the people, and there were a lot of people, if you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all the people that came to Jesus, Jesus didn't tell them before they could be healed. Now, you know what? I'm going to pray for you. I want you to get healed, but you're going to have to change your diet first. <laughs> he didn't say, now, you know what? You are, you you're just doing this and that, and uh, so I can't heal you. In fact, the one person, remember there at the pool of the Bethesda, that he did heal? <laughs> he said, now go and sin no more, lest a worse thing come on you. So even though God heals you, you can lose your healing, according to Jesus' own mouth. <laughs> so we don't want to do that. And so there are things that we, we, we may need to make changes in our lives but you need to understand it is God's will to heal you now, regardless of you. <laughs> Man, I like that. God loves me, period, regardless of what I have done or haven't done. And God will heal me, period, regardless of what I have or haven't done. Because his healing power is not based on my goodness, it's based on his goodness. And we saw that in the last program. In fact, we were over in Luke 5. So let's go back over to Luke chapter 5 and pick up the story that we've been reading. Luke 5, 17, it came to pass on a certain day that Jesus was teaching. The relig religious folk were gathered there from all these different places. And, and the end of verse 17 says the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Verse 18, uh, some men brought a paralyzed man to Jesus and uh, uh, sought means to, to get him into Jesus. They couldn't find, verse 19, couldn't find a way to get him in. So they took him on the housetop and let him down through the roof. Uh, had, to, had to make a way, you know, <laughs> through the roof. And, um, and then it says, Jesus saw their faith in verse 20 and said, man, your sins are forgiven you. And the scribes and Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this that speaks blasphemy? He's only God can forgive sins. Jesus, knowing what they thought, uh, uh, said, Which one's easier to say, Your sins be forgiven or rise up and walk? But that you may know, verse 24, But that you may know that the Son of Man, Jesus, has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the sick, I say to you, Arise, take up your couch, go into your house. And immediately rose up before them, took up that whereon he lay, and departed to his own house, glorifying God. So, so we see here in this particular story that uh, Jesus was teaching. Verse 17 says God's power was there because anytime the word is taught, the power is present. But the power wasn't being released, so nothing was happening, which we talked about that last program. You can have God's power in the room right where you're at and not feel it, see it, hear it. Nothing can be happening even though it's present because God's power, like God is a spirit. 
Those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. God's a spirit, just like you and I were. That doesn't mean spirit as in, as in Casper the friendly ghost or something that can't do anything or you can't see any, whatever. No, it just means he's eternal. He's not like in this natural realm. You know, the body's going to go back to dust. It's going to disappear, going to go. God is in the eternal realm. So when you and I leave this realm, those of us that are born again, when we leave this realm and we get our glorified bodies, they're going to be real bodies, but they're going to be eternal. There's not going to be any more death, sorrow, crying, pain, no more sickness, disease, no more lack, poverty, no more fear, no more depression, discouragement, no more guilt, shame. All of that's going to be done away with in the next realm we get into. But Jesus redeemed us from all of that stuff in this realm. So when we find out about that, then we get to experience the good life. Well, the power was present to heal these guys. They didn't get healed when we read the whole story. None of them got healed. But the guy that came in later through the roof got healed because he found out the power was no respecter of persons. Even though verse 17 says the power was present to heal the doctor, law and Pharisees, it still healed the guy that came in the meeting later on. So he wasn't one of the them that was in the meeting that the power was present to heal. The power was present to heal them. He wasn't one of those them people. <laughs> but yet he came in the meeting later on and the same power that was present to heal them, he took hold of and released the power and it healed his body. So you and I can do that. We, we can take hold of the power of God and get healed in our body. So let's go back to verse 18 and 19 where we left off last time. These four men brought in a bed, uh, in a, bed a man that was paralyzed. They sought a way to, to bring him in, couldn't find a way to get him in. And then they went on the housetop and, and tore it apart and let him down. So I mentioned, in fact, I, I ended last program talking about the importance of our friends. Um, this man had four. Uh, remember uh, Mark, uh, the second chapter and the third verse, if you read this same story, it says he was born of four. So this passage in Luke doesn't tell us four men carried him. But when you read the other gospel, then you find out, oh, okay, so four men were who, who carried him. Uh, these four men uh, were good friends. I pointed out uh, it is important who you surround yourself with. Remember, I was reading, let me just turn back there real quick. I was reading just in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. It says, out of the new living, don't team up with those who are unbelievers. How can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? What harmony can there be between Christ and devil? Uh, how can a believer be a partner with an unbeliever? What union can there be between God's temple and idols? Uh, we're, we're the temple of God. Therefore, come out from among them and separate yourselves. So notice uh, now, now we don't come out from among. Jesus said he, he the Bible said Jesus went in and and fellowshiped with believers and but he didn't stay there. So when it says come out from among them, it doesn't mean separate yourself. Be like a hermit. Don't ever go and, and talk to people and live where the sinners are. No, Jesus did that. We're supposed to do that. But what this is, and that's why I emphasize certain words, don't team, team up. Uh, how can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? How can light live your, your, your lives? What harmony can there be between Christ? How can a believer be a partner? What union? So I'm using all these words showing you that, that uh, this, this separation is our inner circle where we live and have union and, and impartations and where we glean wisdom and where, uh, where people help us grow and they impart into our lives and they speak into our lives. Those kind of people need to be like this man in, uh, in our story here, the paralyzed man, we need to have four good friends <laughs> or eight good friends or three good friends, whatever. You need to have whoever you surround yourself, whoever you let into that inner circle, they need to be people that aren't going to give up on you even when you miss it, even when you're not uh, as good as people think you should be, whatever. You have friends that will stick with you through thick and thin. Amen. That's, I mean, that's, Liz and I decided years ago, that's the kind of friends we're going to be toward people. I don't care if, if they fail in sin, they fall, they mess their lives up. We're going to still love them. We're just going to keep loving them. And we've seen that happen. We've seen people fall and then you love them and love them. And finally they get their lives restored. And boy, they're so grateful that you never gave up on them. 
other people, other Christians. Maybe they failed in finances or other. But we're going to be your friends come hell or high water. We're gonna, that's what a true friend does, friend. Listen, when, some, when a friend uh, has a friend that falls and that friend falls into sin or messes up their life, a true friend is one going to be spiritual. And, and those who are spiritual restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, the Bible says. So a spiritual person is not going to talk and, and put down. I can't believe they did that. No, we, we need to surround ourselves with good friends. This man chose good friends to surround himself with. And so let's let's pick it back up here. Um, verse 18, these men brought this man in a bed. So I mentioned last time they must have heard that Jesus was the healer and it was God's will to heal all because they had already decided we're getting, your, we're getting his healing, period. So they're not going to quit. So that says they brought this man. He was paralyzed. And now watch this in verse 18. They sought means. Now remember, when you seek, you shall find. That doesn't mean just a casual seeking or a, oh, I'll look, okay, it's not going to work. That's not the kind of seeking that finds. They sought means. You know what that means? It means when they got to this building where Jesus was on the inside and they couldn't find a way to get in. That's what it goes on to say. They sought means, but they could not find a way. That means if they sought and couldn't find a way, they went to the front door. And when it was packed like sardines, they went to the back of the building and, and checked out the back entrance. And when it was packed like sardines and couldn't get in, then they went around to a side entrance. And when that was packed and they couldn't get in, they, then they went to the windows on that side of the building and, and they were packed and like sardines. And then they went to the buildings around the other side. Of the, in other words, they had gone around probably several times around this building trying to find a way to get this man in. That's the kind of friends you want. They're going to help you come hell or high water, no matter what it looks like. It looks like it's impossible, but we're going to figure out a way to help you. That's the kind of people you want to surround. And that's the kind of people you and I should be to our friends, people who we call friends, people that we love and care about. That's how we should be. In fact, we should be that way toward everybody, everybody. That, that's good preaching, Brother Larry. Thank you. I'll just go ahead then. <laughs> Hallelujah. So they brought this guy. He's paralyzed. They try and find a way to get in. They can't find a way because the verse 19, because of the multitude. So there were a whole lot of, remember verse 17, there were a lot of doctors of the law and Pharisees that were come out of every town, every village, every city. So there's a whole lot of them. They couldn't find a way to, to get this man in. So then it says in verse 19, they let him down through the tiling. So think about the, how this happened. So I was thinking one time about, OK, so they're carrying this man around the building several times back and forth, entrance to entrance, window to window, trying to find a way to get him in. And I'm thinking this guy's laying in the bed. Maybe he maybe he tells them, who knows? Maybe he's the one that told them once they couldn't get in the front. Entrance, let's let's check the back entrance. So they take maybe it was his idea. We don't know whether it was his idea or their idea. We do know they were all in faith. And I'll prove that uh, whether we get to it today. We'll we'll prove that they were all in faith. But uh, maybe this guy said, come on, let's go to check that. And then, and then maybe he said, OK, let's do this. Let's do that. Well, every time they're going around the building trying to find a way to get in, who had the best view of the roof? <laughs> who, come on, think about it. who had the best view of the roof while they're walking around the building? Not the guys. The guys are, man, they're checking doors and checking windows and, you know, trying to find a way to get in. So they're not the ones looking at the roof every time they go around the house several times. <laughs> Who's looking at the roof? The guy in the bed. Man, he's got a good view of the roof. So every time they go around the building, he, they're, they're saying, well, nope, we can't get in this. Bit. Well, we can't get in here. We can't get in there. Man, he's sitting there the whole time with view of the roof. And probably then by the time <laughs> this, this last uh, go around to the building and they couldn't find a way to get in, it was probably his idea because I know he had faith. I'm going to show you that. He had faith too. So it was probably his idea <laughs> okay, guys, um, 
I know you couldn't get me in any other way. And they may have been sitting there discussing, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? We got to get him to Jesus. What are we going to do? We got to, Jesus said, come. So we're here. So we're not, we're not going home. Boy, isn't that good, friends? Because they could have said, you know, said to their friend in the bed, you know, if it was God's will to heal you, you'd be able to get in the building. But since you can't, maybe it's not God's will. You know, maybe it's just not the right timing. They could have said that to him, but they didn't. They just kept pressing in, kept looking. And so this guy probably came up with the idea, OK, guys, uh, look up to the roof. It doesn't look that steep. Why don't you two of you get up there? Two of you lift me up there. The other two pull me up and then the rest of you come up and let's do some roof reconstruction. <laughs> let's let's take some tiles apart. And that had to be a job because it said he was in a bed. He was in a bed. Wow. You know, the verse 19 says in a couch. Wow. <laughs> and then uh, and then where was it in verse uh, Take up your couch in verse 24. Immediately he took up that where only lay. So we see this guy have a some kind of bed, couch, stretcher, something going on here. And in, in verse 18 calls it a bed. So you got to you got to take some tiles apart here to, to make the hole big enough to get him down. Come on, man. That, that wasn't we're not talking just a little teeny hole here. We're talking uh, a a hole big enough you can get a whole man and his bed down through. And so he tells them, get up there and let me down through the roof. And uh, they agreed, obviously, because look, I mean, they could have said, now, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa. Maybe the guy's name is Jim. They would they could have said, now, Jim, come on, man. We have we have carried you all these miles to get you this meeting. We have sought every way. We've talked to the ushers. They won't let us in. It's too crowded in the side. Man, we, there's, we've gone to every entrance, every window. There's no way to get in. Now, listen, you are already paralyzed. We don't want to try and get you on that roof. And man, what if we drop you and you die? Man, that's, a, you know, you're already bad enough off. We don't want you dying. They could have said those things, but they didn't. They went ahead and got on the roof and started taking the tiles a, 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 apart on the roof. And they had to keep taking it apart until it was big enough to let a whole man in his bed. Wow. Down through the down through to be able to get to Jesus. And so they let him down through the tiling. Notice verse 19. They let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst right in front of Jesus. And this is, I want you to see this. When he saw their faith, he said, man, your sins are forgiven you. Wow. When he saw whose faith? Well, he, Brother Larry, he saw the faith of the four men carrying him. No, that's not what it says. It doesn't say when he saw the faith of the men carrying the man or let him, the, one, the men that let him down through the tiling. It doesn't say that. Neither does it say when he saw the faith of the man in the stretcher. Doesn't say that. It says when he saw their faith. Their faith. So that tells me it's not just the faith of the man in the bed. And it's not just the faith of the men that let him down. It tells me he saw their faith. That means he saw the faith of the men. Man, you got guys that are friends that just would not take no for an answer. They weren't going to take you back home without your healing, without your miracle. You got some faith friends right there. And then I see your faith because, man, you're here to get your healing. You, you didn't tell them to take you home or give up or quit just because you couldn't find a way to get in. You know, friends, that's, that's the key to seeking God. Seek, 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 keep seeking is you don't give up just because you run into a dead end. You don't give up because you hit a brick wall. You don't give up because it looks impossible. Bless God. When you get a hold of God's word, you just hold on to it and you're not letting it go. You're going to be like a bulldog on a new bone. This is my bone. I'm not letting this go. God promised this to me. I'm thank you, Lord. I take hold of my healing and I'm not letting go of it. Amen. And when you do that, I'll tell you, you'll you'll have a, a, a blessed life. You'll have the kind of life that's healed, healthy and whole. 
Hallelujah. Man, we're almost out of time already. So they let this guy down through the tiling and Jesus looked at the faith of the man in the bed and he looked at the faith of the four men that let him down and he said to the man, buddy, I want you to know your sins are forgiven you. Wow. Now that made the Pharisees mad. We'll talk about that next program. That made the guys mad. And, and we're going to talk about, listen, I'm going to show you something. We're going to talk about this man uh, when Jesus said, your sins are forgiven you. Now we know he needed healing, right? So that probably threw all of the doctors, law and Pharisees off because, you know, they started getting mad. Oh, this guy's speaking blasphemies. Only God can forgive sins. But I imagine the way they talked, they were probably also making fun, jesting, making fun of Jesus. Did you hear what he said? <laughs> the man needs healing and he's talking about his sins. <laughs> yeah, they, they did that. They mocked him all the time if you read other passages. So they are probably doing that too. But I'm going to show you the reason Jesus said your sins are being forgiven. You. I'm going to prove to you right at that point when he said that the man could have got up healed. Now, we're going to read the rest of the story. He did get up healed, but not right at that point. But I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you how easy it is to receive the power to heal. I'm going to show you that next program. Man, this is getting better and better, isn't it? As we say from Odessa, Florida, where I grew up in the country in the woods, it's getting gooder and gooder. Hallelujah. Hey, friends, thanks for joining us today. Partners, thanks for supporting the program. If you're not a partner, pray about, consider. If we're being a blessing to you, help us be a blessing to others. That's what true partnership's all about, watering others. Hallelujah. God bless you, man. Have a great day. We'll see you next time. Psalm 107, verse 20 from the King James. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. The New International Version says, He sent forth His word and healed them. He rescued them from the grave. The Fenton Translation says, He sent out His word and it healed, and from their corruptions it freed. The Moffat's Translation says, He sent His word to heal them and preserve their life. With Heaven's Health Food, you can feed your faith for healing by listening to God's Word on healing. In this hour-long recording, Dr. Hutton quotes all of the health and healing scriptures from multiple versions of the Bible over anointed instrumental music. Feed your heart with God's Word and grow in faith. Go to LarryHutton.org or call 888-887-WORD. Join us again for Limitless Life with Dr. Larry Hutton, where you'll get practical teaching from God's Word that you can apply to your everyday life. Go to LarryHutton.org to watch this program and many others. You'll find special offers and resources to help you thrive in life. You can check on Larry and Liz's schedule and join them at a meeting near you. That's LarryHutton.org, or you can call 888-887-WORD.